Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, I'll walk you through the different feature types that are recognized by our automatic feature recognition. So by feature types, I'm referring to the features that are recognized by the AFR, the automatic feature recognition, for the purposes of defining an operation and defining a toolpath. Let's start with the very simplest one. If there is a cavity in your part, it actually is referred to as a pocket. Now, pockets have subcategories for the shapes of the pocket themselves. Let's take a look at this one here. This is what we would refer to as a rectangular pocket, and it's defined as such because it has perpendicular and parallel walls. Even if there's a corner rad in this rectangular pocket, it's still considered to be a rectangular pocket because of the perpendicularity and the parallel, the parallel walls of this cross section. The next subcategory is circular pocket. As long as there is a definable diameter to that cross section, then it's considered to be a circular pocket. Next in the subcategory is an old brown pocket. It has a 180 arc on either end of two parallel walls. So this becomes what's called an old brown pocket. And if the cavity doesn't match any of those criteria, then you have what's called an irregular pocket. Despite the fact that some of these walls might be perpendicular and parallel, it is still in a regular pocket because it does not conform to the geometry of the other three subtypes. Another type of cavity you'll find in your part is what we refer to as a slot. A slot is any kind of cavity that has one or more open edges of the, of the feature. Now in this case, this is an open edge to the air or to some excess stock that you're gonna remove anyway. But as long as it's not uh, part of the walls that enclose the cavity, it is called a slot. And that can be either one or more open edges of the feature. This happens to be a rectangular slot because it has perpendicular walls and parallel walls. This one would also be referred to as a rectangular slot because it has perpendicular walls and perpendicular edges. There does not need to actually be walls for it to be rec recognized as rectangular. So in this case, it has two open edges. That makes it a slot. If the shape of the feature, the shape of the slot, is anything other than rectangular, then it just defaults to an irregular slot. That could be any shape as long as there's one or more open edges to the feature. What we see here is an example of rectangular pocket, but it has a chamfered edge on the top, a corner rad on the bottom base, and it has tapered walls. Despite all of that, it is still a rectangular pocket because the walls themselves are perpendicular and parallel. The taper, the chamfer, and the corner rads, those are just taken into account in terms of the feature definition. Again, later for the strategy, it would know to add a particular tool for that corner rad, it would know to machine those tapered walls. But it starts with the rectangular pocket definition. On the opposite side of the features is bosses. So these are any kind of extrusion from the face of your part. What we see here is an example of a rectangular boss. Rectangular because it has perpendicular and parallel walls. Similar to what we saw with the pocket, we have a circular boss. Again, if the cross section has a definable diameter, then this becomes a circular boss. The third type of boss would be O brown boss. Again, two 180 arcs met by parallel walls. And finally, if none of the, the criteria there are met, it's not circular, it's not rectangular, it's not O brown, then it's just considered to be an irregular boss. All of these subcategories of the features yield themselves towards a definition and a calling of a certain strategy. For instance, a rectangular versus a circular pocket, one might need a rest roughing operation, one might not. An irregular boss might need a rest roughing operation, whereas a circular boss does not. In terms of holes, they are defined by the actual diameter of that circular extrusion. There's a, there is a parameter in your feature recognition options for the max diameter. If anything is smaller than that diameter, it's considered to be a hole, a hole to be drilled with drilling strategies. If it's anything larger than that diameter, it's considered to be a circular pocket. If those holes have a 
counterbore or a countersink on top of them, then they meet a different criteria for counterbore and countersunk features, and those call different strategies completely. Each of those features is something that can be automatically recognized by the software. There are still other features that are not automatically recognized, but that you can add manually. The first of which is called a open profile. So if we take a look at this rectangular slot, I, I want to add a toolpath that just follows that wall right there. So what I can do is I can right click, add a two and a half axis feature. And from the list, you can see the pre-existing list here of the items we've already covered. I can go down to open profile. Open profile is literally just the path you want the tool to follow. And that can be defined by either clicking on the walls or you can click on the edges of the geometry itself. Again, if we take a look at that two and a half axis feature list once again, open profile is a planar path. A curve feature is a three dimensional path. So even though the tool is still coming in from the Z direction, you can get it to follow a three dimensional curve rather than just sticking to a planar curve. And a gray feature, again, is a subset of that where you can define either text geometry or other sketch geometry for the purposes of engraving lettering, logos, or anything else you're looking to just do a center line cut to achieve what looks like an engraved feature on your part. A face feature represents the topmost face of your part for the purposes of adding a face milling operation. The last feature that I'd like to cover is what's called an open pocket. Now this is a pocket in terms of its removing material, but it has no walls at all. It has open edges on all sides. That is different than a face feature because with an open pocket, you can define rough mill and contour mill operations. Rough mill for the removal of the material and contour mill to machine any islands that are found on that open pocket. Let's take a look at that pre-existing open pocket definition that I have on screen. So if you take a look at it, it really just found this top face here. It found all the edges of that top face. But if we take a look at my end condition, I have it automatically extending to the, to the stock extents, meaning that it takes a look at this face takes a look at the outermost edges of the stock and allows me to machine all the material it finds on that entire plane. If we jump to my island section, because it's an open pocket, it's open on all edges, it removes all that material on that same plane, but it recognizes that there are other islands, other features to avoid. So if I were to calculate this toolpath, it would know to remove all this material, but leave the bosses behind. So what we've seen in this video is the various types of feature geometry that are recognized by the automatic feature recognition or geometry that you can manually add yourself very easily with the functionality in both SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. Any questions on this, give us a call at the main tech line or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.